thank you for the invitation and for allowing me to share in these services as we explore together the theme, Victorious Living Now. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. I'm not going to hold this morning slavishly to a text. But in the event you are thinking about a text, um, it would just be Romans chapter 12. And verse 2. I want to commend the persons who were responsible for coming up with such a theme. Victorious living now. A number of questions went through my mind as I contemplated this theme. Questions like, can one lead a victorious life in this current climate? This current climate being a pandemic that has affected the entire world. Questions like, can one lead a victorious life? No. Can one live victoriously? No. After having lost job and the bills are just a mountain. Can one lead a victorious life? No. When one has not lost everything under tragic circumstances. And yes, the questions continue. But I would want for us to look at victory and victorious. And victory speaks about being triumphant, about winning a battle, about overcoming difficult situations, difficult circumstances. That is what victory speaks to. And obviously the victorious, which is an adjective, speaks to the, the whole idea of conquering again, emerging victorious from a war or something of the sort. As we seek to deal with this victorious living now, there are three things or three points that I would want us to ponder. As we move along, the first one is that we have to establish a relationship with Jesus Christ. And then the second one is we have to renew our minds. And then the third one is we have to make a resolve to make it happen. I want us to go to the Old Testament in 1 Samuel chapter 17 which speaks about David and Goliath and all of us are familiar with that account. We probably would have heard that during our Sunday school days. We probably would have heard that even at primary school maybe through secondary school but when we look at David and Goliath we are aware that the Philistines had the Israelites, had the people of God really scampering. They were terrified. And what helped is the fact that there was this giant by the name of Goliath. And we're talking about victorious living now. These people were in fear. And a young man by the name of David 
anointed by God, the scorn of his brothers, he defeated Goliath. So we see a young man moving from shepherd to soldier to singer, psalmist to king. And what is significant is this man defeated the giant that was terrorizing the people of God. Saul wanted to outfit him in his armor. But David was quick to point out this armor that you are outfitting me with. I really am not familiar with this. So I, I don't need this. I am going in the name of the Lord. And I want to suggest to us today that David had a track record. So he was able to draw from that track record and point out to Saul that, look, when I was performing my shepherd duties, there was a time when a lion as well as a bear attacked the sheep and I was able to kill them. I was able to destroy them. My friends, I want to let us know today that if we are going to lead victory, victorious lives, if we are going to live victoriously, then we need to establish a relationship with Jesus Christ. That is the first step to leading a victorious life. I am not in any way suggesting to you that as soon as you make that commitment, that life for you is going to be a bed of roses. I am in not Anyway, suggesting that to you. But what I'm saying to you, that when you have made a commitment, when you have decided that you are going to give your life to Jesus Christ, you are able to live victoriously in spite of the challenges, in spite of the difficulties that you may face. You see, Jesus Christ, our example, Jesus Christ, the one who suffered and just now will be celebrating not only his death, his burial, but his resurrection as well. This Jesus has shown to us what it means to lead a victorious life. And I'm saying that when we connect to him, when we allow him to be in control of our lives, then we are able to live victoriously. Amazingly, when we think of the whole idea of committing our lives or establishing a relationship with Jesus Christ, we need to understand that that relationship ought to be an ongoing one. In other words, the relationship should not start when there's a crisis situation and as soon as we're out of the crisis situation, then we resort to business as usual. No. The relationship ought to be an ongoing one. Jesus Christ has paved the way so that we as a people can lead victorious lives now. It suggests to us, when we think of leading or living victorious living now, there seems to be a sense of urgency. We want to do it now. And this sense of urgency seems to be consistent with the way we tend to operate sometimes. We want everything now. So there's no longer being patient. There's no longer um, waiting, etc. We want it now. And I'm saying, yes, 
We can lead victorious lives now. We can have victorious living now. But we need to understand that this victorious living that is urgent and present is also an ongoing exercise. If you would just jump back and you can peruse 1 Samuel chapter 17 and maybe you can even read earlier chapters but if you would peruse that you would recognize that even though David was able to defeat Goliath and he had the people rallying behind him that David still faced challenges and as the challenges presented themselves he continued to cry out he continued to call out to almighty God because he knew that God was the one who would give him his strength whenever he felt weak whenever he felt down my friends I want to say to us today that even as we explore this victorious living now that there are going to be times in our lives, there are going to be situations that would present themselves when we feel as though we are defeated, when we feel as though we can't go on. And hear me, don't say that because you're a Christian, it is not going to happen. Because yes, you'll have those moments. But I want to suggest to us today, in no uncertain terms, that when we seek to establish that relationship with Jesus Christ, when we seek to draw close to him, that we'll be able to lead victorious lives now. I also want to suggest to us that as we explore this theme of victorious living now, that we have to seek to have our minds renewed. The Apostle Paul, in writing to the church at Rome, declared, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That is how the King James has it. Um, there are other versions that would say, do not allow the world to squeeze you into its mold. And my friends, I want to say to us that when we think of victorious living now, we have to have our minds renewed. I want to suggest to us today that our thinking ought to be changed because there are persons who might say to us that, hey, you know what? You cannot lead a victorious life now. There's so much happening. How can you lead a victorious life? But I want to suggest to us today that victorious living now does not hinge on the circumstances, does not hinge on the situations that would present themselves, but victorious living now hinges on the relationship with the master and the renewing of our minds. You see, the mindset has to change. We have to join with the writer. When he declared, I was young and now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. We have to join with the writer when he said that my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. And I'm saying that it is not just mere talk. It is not just mere a quotation. But when our thinking is changed, when we come to the place where we recognize based on the relationship we have with the master and based on the renewing of the mind in spite of what comes our way we know that this Jesus who died and rose from the dead victoriously he is going to allow us to lead victorious lives 
now and in the future. My friends, we have the idea of establishing a relationship with Jesus Christ. We also have the renewing of our minds. I want to say to us today that we have to resolve to make it happen. We have to make a conscious decision that you know what? By the grace of God, with him being my helper, I am going to lead a victorious life. And I just want to push us back again to 1 Samuel chapter 17 and recognize that even though all the others were fearful, and David was the one who decided, I am going to fight him. I'm not going in my own strength, but I'm going in the strength and in the might of the name of the Lord of hosts. I want to say to us today, because of David's actions, because of David's attitude, the entire nation was able to experience peace and the blessings of Almighty God. And I want to say to us that if one person, if one person decides, you know what, in spite of what is happening, I am going to see, I'm going to make a resolve to lead a victorious life. Now, I want to say to us that a number of persons are going to benefit from that decision and from that experience. So my friends, as we think about establishing this relationship with Jesus Christ, as we think about renewing our mind, as we think about making a resolve to make it happen, I want to say to us today a few things. One, we have to make a conscious decision to be in the Word of God. I know. that because of the busyness of life, which has slowed down somewhat, but persons still are busy in themselves, there seem to be no time for the word of God. But I'm saying that when we spend time in the word of God, when we see experiences of persons who would have led victorious lives, when we see examples of persons who conquered, I'm saying that that helps us to be able to carry on knowing that Jesus Christ is in control. An old chorus, he never failed me yet. He never failed me yet. My Jesus, he never failed me yet. And everywhere I go, I want the world to know, my Jesus, he never fails me yet. My friends, spend time in the word of God. I'm not just reading it as though it's a storybook that you just read, but study in the word of God as you seek to delve deeper and be drawn closer to him. I want to suggest to us today, as we explore and as we contemplate the theme of victorious living now, that we spend time in prayer. And certainly, prayer 
still works. It is not a dying art. It is not something that we run to or we do when there's a crisis situation. But spend time in prayer. Thanking God, praising God, making the petitions and the requests known to him. I'm saying to us, if you're going to lead victorious lives, if you're going to live victoriously now, that we have to spend time in communion with the one who helps us to lead victorious lives. And thirdly, if we are going to experience victorious living, no. I want to submit to us that we have to continue having rich fellowship. I know that because of the pandemic, we have not been able to get together as a community of saints. I know that because of the pandemic, that the numbers they have been lessened. And again, because of the pandemic, we cannot hug a brother like we used to. We cannot greet a brother. But even though these things seem to be against us, I want to suggest to us today that as we think about victorious living now and as we think about the aspect of fellowship, that we take some time out to call up a brother, call up a sister, call up someone to find out how they're doing, check in, because your call might be at a time when that person is done, and because of that call, you can lift them up so that they can continue on the journey of leading a victorious life, victorious living now. I want to suggest to us that leading victorious life and living victoriously now ought to be holistic in nature. You want to grow, you want to glow. You want to impact. You want to touch. And I'm saying that it ought to be holistic in nature. So in every area of our lives, we want to experience victorious living now. In our marriages, Victorious living now. For those who might be contemplating marriage. Victorious living now. For those who are on this journey and maybe you have a business Victorious living now. My friends, this thing is a very powerful thing. And in working through it, and understanding this victorious living now, in spite of all that is happening around us, 
I conclude by saying to us today in no uncertain terms that we can live victoriously now because of the finished work of the cross. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to say to you, establish a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you have one and it's not where it ought to be, I'm saying to you today, renew it so that you can lead a victorious life. As I indicated earlier, it doesn't mean that you wouldn't have life's challenges move, but you'll be able to conquer and rise above them because you know that Jesus Christ is with you because he has assured us he will never leave us nor forsake us. The renewing of our mind. Not allowing the world to squeeze us into its mold. By saying to us, you can never make it. It can never happen. No. Because of what Jesus Christ has done. Again, we are more than conquerors, as the Apostle Paul declared. Then we have to resolve to make it happen. So, my friends, it requires effort on our part. There's no way that we can live victoriously. No, there's no way that we can experience victorious living now without effort. On our part. So the question is, are you prepared to make the effort? Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, your senior children. You know, Lord God, that the experiences are wide and varied. Some might be experiencing emotional pain that is draining them. Some might be experiencing financial pain, which is, which is pushing them to the point of frustration. Some, Lord God, might be battling some sickness, some illness. But Heavenly Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ that whatever the need is, that you would address it and that you would remind them that they are able to lead victorious lives. You would remind us that we are able to lead victorious lives now. We can live victoriously now. Holy Father, for Reverend Seal and his family and the leadership of the Liberty Church, Lord God, for the wider membership, I lift them before you in a very special way. And by extension today, Lord God, those who might be viewing, who might be experiencing some struggle. I pray, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, that you would turn around the situation. Father, thank you for journeying to Calvary and for making it possible that we can be victorious. And not victorious later, 
but victorious now. So God, I commend your people to you, asking that you would bless them and as that they would face the week ahead. They would be conscious of your presence and your power, pushing them to lead and pushing us to lead victorious lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.